I hated this guy. Well, you hate anybody who yells all the goddamn time. time. Yeah, is. yeah, he's as arrogant. He do. And that's the that's the big drawback with him is that the actor just yells a lot. I mean, at first I was like, damn, he's yelling a lot, but I was like, <laughs> man, this actor's really putting it in there. I got I, I, I hats off to to the effort that's going in there because you you gotta oh, feel yeah. like every time he yell cut, he's going, oh, oh yeah, he was tired. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he was tired after, after every take. Because <laughs> Rocket would just ask, ask him a question. Rocket would just ask simple question: Is that the sky? The sky? <laughs> That's there? Yes, Rocket. The sky. Well, of course, it's the sky. What else would it be? <laughs> You're so smart, but yet so dumb. How could you? <laughs> right, right. Like God damn, a man selling your ass now. I'm going back to my cage. <laughs> yeah, even people that work for him. <laughs> like, did, did you want mayonnaise or ketchup on that? <laughs> Do I look like someone <laughs> yeah. who would ask for mayonnaise? <laughs> <Yeah>. Seriously? <laughs>
that when Marvel really wants something to look good, <laughs> when they really put their mind to it, they can do it. All right, now I get it with She Hulk. All right. Hi. Oh, no, oh, Lord. Damn, Shrek walking in here. <laughs> I, no, we make that joke all the time. I'm looking at it, it's like, damn, that yeah, looks like Shrek like, in a suit right, right now. Yeah. Now, I understand, I, I understand that's she TV. Hulk. That's, 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 that's TV. So I, I, I get it. You know, I, I understand. Fine. We can, we can work with that. But that shit, MODOK, you ain't got no excuse for that. <laughs> that it, it almost I mean, feels like they took like whatever team was set up for quantum mania, they went like, um, we're gonna need half of y'all for, for, yeah. for guardians. And, and the rest were like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Just do the best you can. I don't know. And when we say half, I'm talking about the C team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. Ain't no reason for that damn no. That damn baby head right there. Yeah. Wow. Like, oh, I, I thought it looked bad in the movie, but you you see. I know, yeah, that, that, like, that right that there was terrible. Still, yeah. <laughs> I still, I cannot get over how much it looks like a baby in a car seat. Uh -huh. A big headed baby in a car seat. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't get over how I many people looked at that and went, like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Sign it off. I, I'm sure nobody will have a problem with this. They're going to love it. You remember that CGI in the, in the last Thor movie? You have to remember how bad that was? Uh, not all of it, but no. some. Been, yeah, like they looked at this and they're like, yeah, we look, we got about five minutes before we need to get this out. Get that going, man. <laughs> it's not <laughs> finished. Yeah, it is. It is. But you took half our guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> Rocket's backstory in this is absolutely my favorite thing about this movie. Uh, it's the heart of the movie. It, it really right. is. It is the heart, the soul, the emotion in this movie. These these fake animals had more emotional impact, and they had some of the best acting in the film more than these some of these humans. <laughs> yeah, because while these humans are. Acting, Around, <laughs> <laughs> playing around and everything, you know these these they have a scene with uh and listen if you don't want to know anything I'm 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 playing a clip that they provided you can find this on the internet but if you don't want to know anything I understand so if you want to walk off that's fine but here's a glimpse of uh of Rocket's past and Rocket grew up in a lab with uh with with other animals mm -hmm. that were right. experimented on and you know when you when you look at this one of the things that it does first of all knowing rocket story it makes the concept of a talking raccoon just a a, a, a little more believable believable <laughs> a, it, it makes it, it more it makes more sense now yeah and disturbing it disturbing no like, it's like the kind of thing that you've been like enjoying and laughing at now you know the what you know the cost of what got that there you're like oh yeah. Damn, I don't, I don't like this no more. Yeah. Yeah, before we, where everybody was talking about, you know, like like uh, Black Widow, she's like, yeah, I just got an email from Raccoon. You know, we all chuckled about it. It's like, all right, that's just not funny, man. <laughs> 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 raccoon never wanted to talk. <laughs> but no, it's a, it makes it makes more sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Known as, so all these years, it's been a joke. A rock, you know, a raccoon with a gun and uh, wearing little clothes. And it's like, okay, now that we know the backstory, we know the science behind it. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, this really can, you know, it, it makes a lot more sense and fits in things a whole lot better. But uh, I will say this, though, it's very dark. Very dark. Yeah, you used to the Guardians just being all light and, and jokey, joke, joke. Yeah, especially yeah. with the second movie. Yep. Um, and here, it's like, yeah, not all of it. I see I why know. Rocket never want to talk about that shit. Mm -hmm. right. He's got PTSD behind mm -hmm. this. You know, and, you know. Shit, I got PTSD watching watch watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. If you don't like seeing cute animals, being tortured and experimented on, then this will be a hard watch. In fact, let's go ahead. You know, you know, I told you to go away. No, sit your ass down. Let's test this right now. <laughs> let's let's go ahead and test it, how you react to this scene that I'm, up, I'm about to play right here. I would like my name to be Lila. That's a pretty name, Lila. I think my name shall be Teeth. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> my <name is> <laughs> Someday, I'm gonna make great machines that fly. Rocket. Now, if you're choking up watching this scene right here, keep your ass out that theater. Or if you do go, bring a box of, buy a box of, bring the whole toilet paper roll. Mm -hmm. Cause you are going to be, you're gonna be, you, it's, it's, it only gets worse. That's a happy scene <laughs> right there. Yeah, it, 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 it it's, only gets it's worse from there. Because it's it's so happy and you just get the feeling like you know, it's like this, none of this is gonna go down yeah. the way they want. You know, it looks, in a movie like this, when you in that condition right here and you start making plans, yeah. to, you, start, you start making plans to be happy, Yeah, you know that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know how well you guys could see because it, it looks like it's kind of dark because they're in a dark room. But the experiments were done on them they look like something like from Sid from Toy Story would have done. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Great example. It all happens because of uh, 
this piece of shit right here. That's <laughs> that's the high evolutionary played by Chuck uh, Chuck Woody. He wudgy. You know, like, thought I was yeah, making yeah. jokes when I said. No, yeah. I told him the other day. I said, man, I don't. I think his name is Chuck Woody. Wudgy. He thought I was. He thought I was just, yeah. thought I was just yeah. making up, uh, talking nonsense. No, that's the actor's name. Damn, he looks like somebody's angry black grandma. Yeah. <laughs> like, well. be, like before she tell you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, cool. like I'm, I'm not going to tell you again. You got one more time. He got, they got her back from church and took her wig off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to sit down <laughs> one more time. <laughs> now stop. <laughs> yeah, this is a dude from Peacemaker, man. Yeah, he right, was yeah. Mern on Peacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's uh he's 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 cruel and he's arrogant about it. He's the one that's doing all the experiments Jesus, on animals. Jesus, is he arrogant? Oh, yes. yes. And for that, I thought he was a good villain. I, you know, I is there a lot to him besides being just evil? No, not really. But the the, the actor is very good at it, man. And plus, you just the main thing with this villain is that. You hate him. At least I did. I hated this guy. Well, you hate anybody who yells all the goddamn, goddamn time. Yeah, time is. yeah he's as arrogant. That's do. And that's the, that's the big drawback with him is that the actor just yells a lot. I mean, at first I was like, damn, he's yelling a lot. But I was like, <laughs> man, this actor's really putting it in there. I got I, I, I Hats off to to the effort that's going in there. Because you, you got to oh, feel yeah. like every time he yell cut, he's going, oh. Oh, yeah, he was tired. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he was tired after, after every take. Because <laughs> Rocket would just ask, ask him a question. Rocket would just ask simple question: Is that the sky? The sky? <laughs> That's there? Yes, Rocket. The sky. Well, of course, it's the sky. What else would it be? <laughs> You're so smart, but yet so dumb. How could you? <laughs> right, right. Like, God damn, man, settle your ass down. Going back to my cage. <laughs> yeah, even people that work for him. Like, did, did you want mayonnaise or ketchup on that? <laughs> Do I look like someone <laughs> yeah. who would ask for mayonnaise? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, man. He has a lot, but I like the actor because uh, he's, he, like I said, he's from Peacemaker and he's just like, just some of his, his arrogance and his cruelty with these animals. It's not even just the physical cruelty, the mental abuse that he put oh, them yeah. through. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was, it was, it was, it was a cold. lot. Yeah, no, he was mm -hmm. very cold, man. Building them up, make, giving them hope and then dashing them down. And, and laughing at him. Yeah, mocking yeah, him yeah, constantly. Mocking, yeah, constantly. Yeah. Hey, I, I really hated this guy. And that's a good thing. I couldn't wait for somebody to whoop his ass in this movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was so every time he got on the screen, I want to jump up there and slap the shit out of him. I think that it's the Guardians of the Galaxy. So as you can see, it's very colorful sometimes. And I'm gonna talk about the production design in this in a little bit. But it's very colorful at times. It is very lighthearted at times. And sometimes that tone clashes, I think, with the with some of the dark moments in this in in, in the movie, uh, without ruining anything or spoiling anything at all, there is a huge tragic event that happens in here, and I actually am glad that the movie took it that far because I didn't think they were going that far. But the characters during this time they're still joking around, they're still laughing, they're treating it actually pretty light, and they 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 mention it. They, it's not like they ignore it. They mention that it's really messed up what happened, but a lot of the a lot of the background of this tragedy happening is uh, is used for the characters to make uh, comedy relief out of. And I just thought it didn't blend together very well, especially when they, the way they set it up and they, the way they introduced certain elements before. Uh, also, just personally, I'm a little burned out on the dumb character humor because, you know, as we said, Marvel's been doing that a lot. Now, Guardians have been built on that. You know, that's their that's their brand. Being stupid, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's what that's yeah, their you brand. You can't fault them for that. No, yeah, and, when they but, started it. Yeah, but you know, I, just, I I don't fault them for that. And there are people who like that. It's just that whether they started or not, I've seen so much of it lately that I'm, a, I'm just a little, a little burned out on it. You know, uh, I feel like because for one, I feel like they're making dumb characters because now they're just going for easy laughs with that. I felt that way through a lot of it, but then there's a point when they kind of acknowledge it or, see, or address that's it. What I was going to say. So yeah. it's like, okay, that that actually makes me not. You know, hate it so much. Yeah, and see, there's a point where, like, I, I, you know, we talk about this all the time. Just because you mention it doesn't make it better. But, 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 but I'm not saying I'm saying that for me, not anybody else. No, so. no, 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 no. I get what you're saying because I, I, I do that all the time. Where I'm like, yeah, just because you, 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 we know it's there, and you saying you know it's there, but what you gonna do about it? But I felt like they did do something about. It. Like it wasn't just mentioned; it was actually talked about, discussed. <clears throat> no, and I, there's a scene that I did like with that. Because mm -hmm. I'm gonna mention that there was one scene I did like with that because somebody not only. Again, it wasn't just a mention. They called them out yeah. on it. But but again, that doesn't, for me, it doesn't like fix anything else with the movie just, you know, following. Like, because everything is Thor now. 
You know, everything is story, you know, and, and then they're applying it to other characters. Like Modoc ended up being a dumb character. You know, uh, 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 even some of the Spider-Man villains, they weren't dumb, but they had goofy moments. And then, you know, this these goofy moments, everything is starting to spill, feel like Spider-Man or feel like Thor in a way. And now they're applying it to random characters, uh, like we like some of the examples I just gave. That's why I wonder what the reaction is going to be like with uh, Adam Warlock, because Adam Warlock is another one. He's another dumb character. He, well, I mean, that's the thing. It, there's been a lot of anticipation, like, oh, how are they going to do Warlock? Right. And when it all came down to it, I was like, I don't know. He, I feel like he didn't really need to be there. Yeah. I, I mean, he kicks things I mean, off, but. He, he's, he wasn't significant, other than, like you said, being dumb. Yeah. See, the, a lot of people talked about, and I don't know the character very well. That's the comic book version John that you're looking Peter. at right there. Uh, I heard that he's very stoic or he's, you know, a little more serious. He's in this. Now, they explain it. Uh, they say that Adam Warlock has not been around that long. As you know, he's, he's hatched in a cocoon. He was he was yeah. he was manufactured. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he's just like a, a, an 11 or 12 year old kid. Yeah, they, yeah. And they let him out early. Yeah, yeah, and so he's just dumb. But again, it's just another dumb character. They play him up for laughs mostly. Now, there is a, a scene where the action with him oh, yeah. is not bad. He comes in tearing shit up. <laughs> and Boy. I thought, OK, I thought that that was kind of fun. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, the character goes, I'm like, all right, see, we, we we got another one now. Yeah, you know, the way he's fighting Drax, and it is, there's a, it's a great scene in there with that. He just busts in and at the uh, when we least expect it. It's a great intro for the character, I will yeah. say that. Oh, yeah, amazing intro. Yeah, no, it's a great intro. But Will Poulter, I think, plays the character well. I, I think that I would like to see Will Poulter in a, a, you know, another outing as Adam Warlock where he's not as dumb. Look, he can still be a fun character. He can, he doesn't have to be serious, but I would like it maybe if the character just matured a little bit, learned some things, because that's what he does. You know, they're like, he just doesn't know any better. Somebody tells him to do something, he overdoes it. Mm -hmm. you know, he's just stupid. <laughs> 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 and they call him out on that too. I would love to see another uh, another uh, another, <laughs> another show or mother, another uh, movie where movie. this character comes in and he's uh, he's not he's he's fun, but he's not as dumb because I like Will Poulter in it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's amazing in it. Yeah, yeah, it, but it was funny when he was given some instructions and he just overdid it. He just like, <laughs> like God, he's that's what you asked for. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's another one where I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying there's another one where they talked about him gaining so much muscle for I this know. role. They talked about how much he had to work out and how much chickens he had to eat and how he, he had to <laughs> had to eat the, like a that, that damn truckload of rice every day and didn't take that shirt off. And no. I, that's what I was looking for. Oh, but I'm like, <laughs> no, I was thinking that too because there's so much publicity about the muscle he put on and how he got in shape. And there's one scene with a bare shoulder and an arm. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's all you get. It's like he got like a laser hit him and all you saw was a little bit of skin right there. And I was like, damn, now listen, I ain't somebody who lusted to see Will Poulter, but... <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if, if these people gonna work out that hard, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, what's his name? Camille Nanjani, because he was, he was bragging about it. He was yeah. on L magazine covers, like, look at me. Yeah, look yeah. what I did. Yeah, he was a bit happy, uh -huh. and then he was in that movie. And, and <laughs> I didn't see <laughs> shit. I was like, I just think if you gonna work that hard, man, come on, give him a shirt in the scene. He had one scene <laughs> with that where he wore a sleeveless shirt. That was about it. That, that, yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I, I because I would tell him, I shit if in the, in the middle of a scene if I worked that hard to get those abs, yeah. I rip I rip my shirt off <laughs> whether that shit was in the script or not. <laughs> because now we're gonna need you to put the whole costume on. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know Hugh Jackman like y'all. Yeah. I better not be wearing no yeah, goddamn no. shirt. <laughs> shit, there would be a scene where I'm fighting my shirt. <laughs> it won't stay on. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> you we, would see my abs. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that I hate these characters. I don't. I don't actually. I just, like I said, I, you know, with, with everything starting to feel the same, it's not that I don't like Marvel's humor. It's, it's not that. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys who's like, Marvel's joking all the time. Well, a little bit I am, but not, not because of jokes necessarily. It's just that things is just starting to blend together. It's funny that a little bit of Thor and also, but Guardians. Guardians really set this whole thing off of like having this kind of sense of humor. And now it seems like it's kind of spread to other properties where it doesn't seem as special anymore. Like if this was just Guardians, I'd be like, all right, because that's their brand. Yeah. Now everything's starting to feel a little bit the same. And so that's why I am um, I'm looking at this and saying that even though they're responsible for this humor, they, you know, it, it is their brand. I might be a little tired of it, but I am still fond of the characters. I still like what they what they've done with the characters here because their relationships are are stronger now. And, they, you know, there's a. Uh, 
And there's dynamics that are happening that I, that I find very interesting that I have developed with them. Uh, you know, now there's typical bickering, again, for jokes. You know, a lot of stuff with them fighting, you know, it's for, it's for them to pick on each other and get an easy laugh, just like, you know, with being dumb, it's getting an easy laugh, I think. But I do, uh, I do think that there's certain members now who have started to find, you know, their chemistry together. And I like that. Yeah. Well, I, and also, yeah, it has always been the the bickering. There was more banter and then it was just for jokes. But now they have some they have some bickering moments that actually like there's nothing funny. It's like, OK, you yeah. can see the, the evolution of their relationships in that some of them, there's things about each other that start to get on their, their nerves and, and they get kind of tired of holding their tongues about it. Yeah. No, they. They uh, uh no they're, they but they they're, they're calling each other out but they're also it, it more than ever do they really feel like a family here mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know when they starting to fight they all start to feel like brother and sister now um, I really I really enjoyed the uh, uh, the relationship between uh, uh, Drax and uh, and Mantis you know which is something that we saw when they did the Christmas special. You know, maybe ever since I saw the Christmas special, I thought that they work well together, you know, because they really are like brother and sister mm -hmm. uh, more than. Uh, well, I won't say anything in case you didn't see the Christmas special, because the Christmas special actually reveals a lot. And that's one thing I need to tell you. Uh, if there's anything you need to prepare for, for watching uh, this movie, you know, if you don't know much about the Gardens of the Galaxy or you haven't seen every movie. Uh, hold on. Oh, I start to sneeze. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Like, Give me your hand. No, wait, 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 wait. Give me your hand. What are you doing? <laughs> Give me your hand, brother. He passed the sneeze on to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you ruined my sneeze, man. You wouldn't grab like, my hand. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> grab my hand when I put it out there for you. Uh, no, they. I would watch this Christmas special because I think. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The Christmas special is actually where at least one big piece of information is revealed about certain characters. And their relationship to another I character. I thought that was revealed in the second one. It might. Yeah, oh, that, that, okay, that it might be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I didn't see the Christmas special, but okay. I, yeah, I still yeah, knew it was, that. It was, yeah, it was in the second one where it got revealed. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, watch this anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, watch it just because there, you know, you do get a sense of where Drax and Mantis start to actually get this relationship that they have together. Uh, I would. Uh, I think that's you know, there's not much that you have to see after that. No, no. no you know, no. with that. You, um, I also, uh, you know, talking about how characters are developing, I like uh, I like that Nebula is starting to grow. Yeah, yeah, she's one of my favorites in the movie. I I, I felt that with her in the What If episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, she's trying to work around her anger issues, and that is a big thing because these mother don't make it easy at all. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, <laughs> these damn fools. I mean, especially Drax and Mantis, man. They, I I can't blame her for being mad all the time. You know, especially Drax with his big dumb ass. <laughs> you know, him alone would try anybody's patience. Yeah, I mean, the two of them are a bumbling comedy team. But yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. But then you got Peter Quill, who's just uh, drunk all the time. Yeah. And, and everybody's kind of like, and I know you got your heart broken, but get your shit together. But I mean, but Drax and Mantis, man, I mean, they, they especially them, because there's a there's a moment where uh, uh, Nebula, she's man, she's doing her job. She's trying to help people, and these two are just mm -hmm. around. <laughs> and there was a moment she just lost it, and she said, "Will you for once in your life stop being stupid, please?" <laughs> it's almost like she was just begging them. <laughs> now that's the moment where I said, "All right, that's where they got called out." Because I was one hundred percent behind her. I said, "Baby, you tell them." <laughs> I said, "I can relate to her so much because they've been getting on my damn nerves too." It was, it was funny because she was trapped in a room with both of them. <laughs> and it was just them two, and, her. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like a mom who's just tired of the kids. Well, y'all stop, <laughs> please. <laughs> And even then, he was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you stop. <laughs> <laughs> For all my talk about Drax being big and dumb and getting on people's nerves, I will have to say that his story did wrap around very well. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't expect it to. It no, no, like it's no. just going to be business as usual. No. And then like when you look and it's like, oh, that came around. Well, the reason why is because you know, they, they bring it back to what started out as a theme with Drax that they kind of dropped, mm -hmm. which is him being a parent. Right, you know, right. him being a not just a parent, but a caring father. You know, that was 
that was something that was actually a big deal for him, a big, a big emotional thing of loss. And they kind of dropped it for, again, you know, laughs for him just being stupid. You know, they they brought that around at a time when it was crucial in this movie and they brought it back to that. And I thought, OK, good. You know, let's I, I was hoping they would do that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, it's. Uh, you know, I'm talking about how great it is for uh, a Nebula to be, you know, getting a, a hold of her anger issues. On the flip side, it's really cool to see Gamora be mad as hell. <laughs> oh, I love this Gamora, man. I love this yeah. Gamora, 2014 too, man. Gamora? I love it. Yeah, I'm glad they brought it back around to her being angry. And, and they stay and, consistent with it. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah, Gamora is, I, I actually love this angry Gamora, man. I miss you. It's for red, red is for green. I don't think so. Try it then. Hello! See, this is why this <laughs> Nebula's always on your ass because of things like that. <laughs> Man, this is this is what girls have to go through all the time with some dudes confessing their love. Oh, I know. To, and I'm trying to say, like, I'm not interested, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. Even um, saying the name wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just trying to give hints. But I mean, you got to feel bad for him because I mean, look, you know, they, they he did have something with her. Yeah, not this yeah, version. I know. You know, I know. Still, yeah. you know this, this is not like he's had, he met at a bar. I know, <laughs> you're a creep, I know. You know, he, he's hurting. <laughs> he's hurting. <laughs> they couldn't have been together more than a year. <laughs> he's kind of going overboard. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel for him. He's hurting. Yeah, man. Man. I, oh, leave him alone, man. man. <laughs> like, she was actually trying to be nice. <laughs> But most of the time, she's like, hey, get the <laughs> away from me. Man, you saw Infinity War. That man was in love. Yeah. <laughs> he destroyed the, 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 the universe, man, for her, man. <laughs> Leave him alone, Mark. Leave it alone, man. I even, there's moments here, like, I, I, I ain't gonna say nothing. I just, she, let's just say she's a, she's way more down to earth. Even though she's mad all the time, she's way more down to earth than the, than the last Gamora. Mm. No, the, the last more they tried to you know keep her off feminine and everything, but also tough. Yeah, no, nah, she's she's one of the dudes here, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in this, you can really see why they always called her the most dangerous woman in the galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is Thanos' daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would be proud. <laughs> yes. Um, also, you know, you saw how they kept the humor in there. So that's one. You know, I'm with me. Haven't been complaining about the humor. I will say the humor comes in very handy in parts like this because, you know, this could have been taken real serious. Yeah. You know, and it could have been real sappy and it could have weighed the movie down with that kind of emotion. And I thought like, well, this is cool where they actually, you know, come in at the right time with this with this sort of humor. So I, I like that, man. Uh, Chris Pratt. Even though Martin won't, won't, won't give him a break. <laughs> Star Lord, Maybe. even though you won't give, you won't you won't give Star Lord a break, man. Look at him being creepy hitting on that girl. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> I, I, uh, I like him. I can't say a whole lot is different. You know, I mean that's a good thing. I actually do think a lot is different. I, I, I felt like he was going that Homer Simpson route by by the time we were in the in the second movie. Do you? Yeah, but but here, you know, now that he has something to mourn and is trying to claw his way back to being a whole person. Uh, I, I I I felt a lot more depth with this character this time. See, I always mm -hmm. felt depth with him because in the last movie, uh, spoiler right here, you know, his father was ego and you had the whole deal with his mom <laughs> and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I just felt the whole storyline like this is so obvious. I, I it, 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 it There's no surprise here. You can see how it's playing out. They drop in every clue like in yeah. case you don't get it. And, and so when it does, I was like, I don't know. It, it felt very rote to me. See, I didn't like the movie that much, but that's a storyline that I did like. I love that whole thing with Ego and 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 and, and Peter. Me too. Yeah, and I, I thought I thought that was where he had emotions. I, that's why I thought like this this you know that storyline is now the Rocket Raccoon in him storyline here, which is actually pretty cool because now he's lost so much. He lost his girl, lost his mom, he was about to lose his raccoon. <laughs> so yeah, that scene yeah. right there is tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh you know I I I don't. But other than that, I think throughout most of the movie, I think you know he's still. You know, Star Lord, which is like I said, not a bad thing, man. You know, I, I, I will say probably the the biggest thing for him in this movie is not even with the raccoon. It's uh, is him making history. You know, dropping the first f bomb. Oh, that's right. In a in, in a, in a in a Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first one. Yeah, that's the first one. Oh, yeah. Wow. As a matter of fact, he says on something where you're like. Wow, they could have easily have said cut something the, else. Said yeah. something else. It makes me think that he actually ad libbed that. Yeah, name. I, I, think, right. I yeah. think he did ad lib that. And <laughs> this is the, yeah, this is the first one. Press that in. But you, we don't know. Okay. Now what? Open the 
door. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said that because he was really tired. Yeah, no, of yeah. I think he was really mad. <laughs> they didn't tell him that she couldn't open that that, that, that she was active. Yeah, because yeah, even at the point where he's like, just push the button. Yeah, you already yeah. see, like I, he's, I he's see. genuinely angry. I know. Yeah. I see he's, he's really mad. He's a good actor, <laughs> not that goddamn good. Yeah, I know. I think he was mad. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, what's better than that F word, man? Being able to say it in a lot of languages. Ah, no, I was like, something coming. Hey, if you like using yeah. that F word, it's becoming more family friendly now. Why not use it? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Why not use it around the world when you greet somebody? You know, uh, summer is coming, and that means that a lot of us will be traveling, a few people. Some people are going to be going out of the country for the first time. You know, going to meet that fake girlfriend you got to go over there. <laughs> you know, before you're disappointed, go ahead. You might have a better chance if you use Babbel. Actually, you have a better chance of making friends and speaking to people all over the world if you use Babbel. That's B-A-B-B-E-L. Babbel is the sponsor for this portion of the show. And with Babbel, it's great because you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. And once you do that, and probably in about three or four weeks, you'll be able to have a conversation in whatever language that you're trying to study or get to know. People are starting to even travel for business more. Mm -hmm. And learning a new language for business is very effective for your business. <laughs> and also, you have apps that use AI, artificial intelli intelligence for their lessons. But Babbel, they have a lot of a experts, over 150 language experts who have come in, like real native speakers, uh, who have crafted these lesson plans and these are not done by computers, you know, they put this in chat GPU, whatever it is, a GPT, <laughs> GPT, you know, <laughs> GPT. They, they, didn't, they didn't put it in there and say, hey, chat, give me a lesson right here. No, there's a real person that did that. Also with this, the teachings have been proven scientifically to be effective in 14 different languages. Let's see what they got here. Spanish, French, German, Italian, Russian, Portuguese, Turkish, Dutch, Swedish, Polish, Norwegian, and Danish. And they also have speech recognition technology. And that helps you improve your pronunciation and your accent. So you don't sound country as hell when you're over there trying to speak another language to somebody. You know, uh, there's so many ways to learn with Babbel. They have one-on-one -on -one lessons. They have apps. They have games. They have videos. So, and a lot of these can be done on your time, whether you want to spend about 15 minutes or an hour or more. No, they got everything covered for whatever your lifestyle is like and for whatever way you feel like it's most effective for you to learn. And they have a 20 day money back guarantee. Now I'm speaking your language. <laughs> so I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, I'm speaking money to you now. Hey, let me speak some more money to you real quick. I know money language real well. Where the money well. resides. Where the money resides. <laughs> where the money, money resides. <laughs> <laughs> it resides right over here at babbel.com slash toasted. You put that in, you get 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com dash toasted. Now's the perfect time to do it and save some money doing it. I wanna thank Babbel for sponsoring this portion of the show and all of you out there for your support as well. Gracias. <laughs> De nada. All right, everybody. Let's see what we got here. Moving on. Oh, you know what? This is what I wanted to talk about. I thought, I don't know if anybody's thinking about this, and they're not, and they should be, because oh, poor Groot, poor Groot, boy, he don't. We even talking he, about him. He don't. He don't get no attention like he used to when he was a little baby Groot. No. Uh, you know? they, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah dude, see that baby Yoda took oh. that away from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah look, baby, I got your shit. <laughs> we can't have two of them walking around. No, no, no ever since baby Groot grew up, don't nobody pay attention to him no more. <laughs> That's how it goes. It is yeah. how it goes when you the baby of the family, and yeah. all of a sudden you grow up to be a big old ugly teenager or something. Yeah, ain't yeah. nobody yeah. paying attention to like you no all more. Those child well, stars. Star, Star yeah. Lord does. Star Lord. Yeah, no, well, that's the thing. You know, nobody. Nobody's paying attention to Groot like they used to because Baby Groot was all the rage, man. Everybody had Baby Groot shirts, toys. They had they bought that little plastic dancing uh -huh. plant. Uh, don't nobody talk about Baby Groot no more. But Baby, uh, the, but grown Groot, grown ass Groot. I gotta say, he doesn't, he, you know, doesn't get a lot of attention like he used to. But he holds it down in here, man. Yeah, he's oh, one yeah. of the most effective members of the team. They wouldn't be able to yes. get it without him, man. Yeah, badass. Yeah, yeah. In fact, he is a. Uh, He's Star Lord's side hand man sometimes since Rocket's not around. Mm -hmm. right. He says, All right, Groot, you up. Y'all <laughs> asses out the way. <laughs> 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 Rocket. Dude, like a man in a suit, though. <laughs> I want to come. No. You know what to do with these. 
Yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah I got, I got you. you. Yeah. <laughs> that did like a man. He <laughs> said, said, look at the run. <laughs> that was a, that did like a man of rubber suit. <laughs> you weren't lying. Man, what's, what's the, what's look, the look at that. What's the, what, you know what he looks like? He looks like, uh, he looks like uh, Arnold ad? Schwarzenegger in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> <laughs> what was that tissue ad they ran a couple years ago? That's what he looked like. I forgot what tissue. it was. Like, tissue? Yeah, it was like yeah. tissue. Look at that right there. He looked yeah. like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Sinbad and Jingle All the Way. <laughs> That's big old cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Just a jog. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. got a ship made out of uh, skin and meat. <laughs> complete with pubic hair and hair follicles and yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of gross, but it's fascinating to look at what they did. Even people's uh even people's body suits are made out of meat mm -hmm. right. and or, or, organic tissue. I thought that that was pretty pretty good. Uh and it's like again, just a colorful film too, man. You know, it's uh it was at times I said it didn't work all the way. It was a contrast between the darkness and the and how colorful this movie is. And then at times I was amazed at how, you know, they did work together. Um, the soundtrack, I have to complain about a little bit. I've, you know, it's always been a big part of the Guardians uh, franchise. You know, a mix of 70s and 80s tunes. Uh, don't think that that worked as well here. It felt a, a lot more random. Um, yeah, they go, going through the decades all the way to the 2000s, I guess. Yeah. With all the, with all the, the constant needle drops. It was, it was so much more... Uh, thematic with the first movie because it was all stuff from the radio from the 70s yeah, right. yeah. and something I didn't get and I mean you know I, I, I miss things all the time but it seemed like okay these were the songs Peter had on his Walkman because that was when he got uh, you know Snacks. abducted yeah. Yeah. so how does he have songs from the 90s and In the 2000s, 2000s. no oh. I know I saw that and I don't I didn't get that either I mean again y'all yeah now he I, I think he could have been getting them later uh, you know, I don't I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess he came to Earth during the yeah. Infinity War. Yeah, I think he got them. It's, I think it might <laughs> yeah, be insinuated that he got it later, especially with them going to Earth sometimes. Uh -huh. So he could have got them later. Yeah. So I, you know, uh, and downloaded them. But I, you know, I didn't have so much a problem with that as I did. It's just they didn't seem to make sense with some of the the placement of the songs. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a a big action scene in here, and it's kind of cool and it's kind of funny. And during the whole time they're playing. Oh yeah. The reasons that we oh. Now I love Earth, Wind, and Fire, and yeah. that is absolutely one of my favorite it, songs. Right, right. Reasons. Right. Yeah. Here. I love that. <laughs> Philip Bailey, Reasons, man. So I appreciate them acknowledging Earth, Wind, and Fire and playing the music and, and playing at least one song by Black people. Yeah, <laughs> yes, one song. Yes. <laughs> but it just didn't make sense with the scene. No, I know. I was like, no. well, they're, they're mostly flying in space. I was like, well, it's cool and all. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I like. I love hearing the songs, yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to complain yeah, about that's it. That's why I won't complain. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, <laughs> like the songs. Like, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. It doesn't really fit. And they did play some black music. They played Rubber Band Man. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Endgame? Oh, what? Infinity War. Infinity War. Yeah. Oh, no, I no, I meant in the Guardians movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. You know, I, 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 I will say, though, as you see, I've had some uh, criticism of this, and I've also had a lot of praise for it. Uh, I'll just say that I really did like the ending of the movie. Uh, it's it's not a happy ending. It's more bittersweet, but it's not forced either. It's as outlandish as all of this is, and this movie's wild. It is, it is a weird-ass movie as we expect it to be from James Gunn. But, you know, uh, uh, the ending did feel just natural, man. Yeah, I, I like the way they just kind of let the... It's almost like they let the story really just kind of... Write, you know, itself. To write itself out. Yeah, and uh, that was good, man. They didn't force anything. Um, we'll tell you this, too. There's two post-credit scenes here. Uh, you're going to watch them. They're amusing. But one of them out is straight up just product placement. Yeah. Uh, one is straight up. They are just selling mm -hmm. something. So just let you know. I, I honestly got to say, when they both played out, I was like, I could have skipped both of those. You really, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you really can. I mean, you, you're going to watch them. You know, everybody. Yeah, you're already yeah, there. Yeah, you, you're going to be curious. Stay there for it. I'm telling you, that last one, they just trying to sell you something, man. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> dude, that product bought, they, they bought that stinger. Uh-huh. Mm. But overall, though, I, I I did enjoy this. Wait, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh almost as much as I did the first one. And maybe the first one I liked a little bit better because it it felt tighter and mm -hmm. everything is a surprise. Uh, but this one, this one is, a, is such a journey where nothing, there, there, there wasn't any time there was a scene where I was like, 
can we move past this? It was always taking you someplace interesting or unexpected. And you're, you're taking all these different places. Like the whole thing felt like a long journey, but not like a, yeah. oh, what a long journey. It's like, yeah, this movie's long, but it was constantly doing something and, and taking you on a ride. And it's, it's what you want a movie like this to do. This was, and this can be like a hot take, this was the best written project, I feel like, since uh, Infinity War. Um, mm. The action here, all the characters here, I just felt like every character was written a lot better than they were in the previous films. If I'm being completely honest, I think this is my favorite out of the three uh, Guardians and movies. Uh, we giving our ratings? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Screw it, I get it better than six. Okay, what about you? It's more of a low full price for me, because it's not perfect. No. But, but it, it, no. it, it, it is... It's it's the best of what one of these kind of movies can be. Yeah, it is a hot matinee for me. Like I said, it's just it's, it's the, the, this humor has never been my favorite, and even more so now. But I mean, there's there's a lot of great things in here. Like I said, mostly I'm just I'd see this again just for Rocket Story. No, no, that, that was so done so the, well. Those parts were handled amazingly, man. Mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper is, uh, you know, phenomenal voice work with this, man. You gotta give him credit. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a hot matinee for me. Uh, I, I just got, you know, my final words. Uh, Howard the Duck. Yeah, yes, I, I, I was you're so talking all, all about Cosmo. Cosmo. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I, I did Howard, Howard a little bit more. I didn't yeah. want to spoil nothing because I didn't know that's a spoiler or anything I, like that. But, he's been in all these. So that, you know, people, yeah, he, I'm, he, that's all I'm going to say. Just Howard the Duck. <laughs> get, get him out there. So that's yeah. all I'm going to say. <laughs> put him in a damn TV series. I, I, Do something with him. I'm telling y'all that, that my man Howard, we, I think we're getting closer, <laughs> but I've, I've been, I've been, I had, I've had his back for you years. Have. Yeah, yes. you've always had his back. Yeah, he was in game. Yeah, he held it down. It's time he gets the respect that he has due at this point. He saved the world. I, mean, hey, I was there. So yeah, man. Make it happen.